Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena and welcome back to my C++ series. So last time we talked about how you can actually use libraries in C++, in your C++ project, and specifically how you can link them statically. But today we're gonna to be talking all about dynamic linking, what it is, how to use it, when you should be using it and all that stuff. And this time we're going to be linking GLFW dynamically. So in the static video, we linked it statically and now we're gonna link it dynamically and kind of see what, what what's involved in that and what the differences are. So first of all, dynamic linking, what what does it mean? How is it different than static? Why is it called dynamic? So dynamic linking is linking that happens at runtime. So static linking happens at compile time. When you compile a static library, you then link it into either an executable, an application, or a, a, a dynamic library. And that's kind of it, you're done. You literally take the contents of that static library and you put it into like with the rest of the binary data that's actually in your dynamic library or inside your executable. And because of that, there are there are a number of optimizations that can happen because the compiler and the linker is now fully aware of the code that actually goes into an application when you link statically. We're gonna be talking more about the actual performance differences and what, what linking statically versus dynamically actually means in a future video. This is just a basic overview. But just keep that in mind that static linking kind of allows more of that optimization to happen because the compiler and the linker kind of is just, they can see more of the picture, specifically the linker can see more of the more of the picture. Whereas dynamic linking, as I mentioned, happens at runtime. What that means is that when you actually launch your executable, that is when your, your dynamic link library gets loaded. So it's not actually part of the executable. When you launch a normal executable, it gets loaded into memory. However, if you have a dynamic link library, what that means is that you actually link another library, an external binary file, dynamically at runtime. So you run your application, and then you load an additional file into memory. Now, the way that executables work, they can actually require certain libraries to be present, certain dynamic libraries, certain external files to be present before they actually let you run the application. That's why on Windows, for example, you might sometimes see when you launch an application, you might sometimes see an error message pop up being like blah, 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 dot DLL is required or is not found, so we, we can't start the program. And that's one form of dynamic linking. That's kind of, I like to almost call that kind of 50-50 because the executable is aware of the dynamic link library and it actually lists it as a requirement, but it is still a separate file, a separate module that, that is loaded at runtime. You can also load dynamic link libraries completely like dynamically. So the executable can have nothing to do with it at all. You can launch your executable, your application, it won't even ask you to include a certain dynamic library, but then inside your executable, you can actually write code which looks for and maybe loads certain dynamic libraries at runtime and then obtains function pointers or whatever you need to the stuff that's inside that dynamic library and then uses that dynamic library. So with dynamic libraries, just keep that in mind. There's kind of the static dynamic version, which is basically my application actually requires that this dynamic link library be, be present and I'm already, I've, I'm already aware of what functions are in it and what I can use. But then there's also a, I want to arbitrarily load this dynamic library. I don't know what, I don't even know what's in it, but I want to pull out some stuff or I want to do many things with it. And there are very good uses for both of them. We're going to, we're actually going to focus on the former one for today, which is I know my application requires this library, but I'm going to link it dynamically instead of statically. So let's just jump into an example and look at what that looks like for GLFW because GLFW actually lets us link either statically or dynamically. So, la so in that static, so in that static linking video, we basically just linked our GLFW statically. We included the header file and we called GLFW init. If I run my program, you'll see that it compiles successfully and it prints one as our result here. Now, not everything is going to change if you link dynamically. This include, for example, remains identical. I mean, the header file supports both static and dynamic linking. There are actually differences that need to occur with your declarations for things like functions if you want to link statically versus dynamically. And we'll explore that in a minute. But GLFW, like most libraries, actually kind of supports both static and dynamic linking with that same header file as we'll see in a minute. So this doesn't change. And if I right click on my project and go to properties, you'll see that under C, C++ general, I have that include path. Again, if you're not 100% sure about how to set all of this up, definitely watch my last video on static linking. Even if you're only ever interested in dynamic linking, you still need to know what static linking is because a lot of the time you'll actually probably want to link statically if you can instead of dynamically. So check that out if you're not sure. This doesn't change. And then if we go into linker input, we see that we have glfw3.lib. So if I open up my folder with glfw, and I'll just right click here, hit open folder in File Explorer. And then over here in my File Explorer, I'm just going to go back here into dependencies, glfw and lib. So you can see here that I've got three files, glfw3.lib, which is clearly the one that we're actually currently linking the static library. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one and replace it with the dynamic version. 
If we go back over here, you can see clearly that we have two kind of DLL files. Well, one, one of them is actually called glw3dll.lib. That one is just basically a series of pointers into kind of this DLL file so that we don't have to actually retrieve the locations of everything at runtime. It's very important that these two are compiled at the same time because if you try and kind of use a different static library to link with a DLL at runtime, you're probably going to get functions mismatching and wrong kind of memory addresses for function pointers and just it's not going to work out basically is what I'm saying. So this of course is distributed by GLFW so they were compiled at the same time and they are related directly to each other. They, you can't separate these two. So back over here I'm going to type in glfw3dll.lib and that's all we have to do from this side. Now if I hit OK and I try and build this it's going to work successfully, right? So you can see that it's generated my executable file. If I just move this over here, no one really cares about the error list anyway. Output is where it's at. I've moved this over here. You can see that hello world.exe has successfully been generated. Let's try and launch our application now. All right, and you can see that we get this error message that I talked about earlier. The code execution cannot proceed because glfw3 or dll was not found. This is where we actually have to show our program. This is glfw3 dll, right? I've got it over here, please load it. And the way that we do that, in a simple case, is just basically placing that DLL file in the same location as our executable. So if I go over here, I can copy this DLL file, go back over here into dependencies, hello world, debug, and you can see this is the path with my executable. If I paste this in here, and I go back to either Visual Studio, I could have run it from there as well, and I try and run my program, you can see that it works successfully, and we actually get one over here. All right, beautiful. If I go back over here to my actual Windows Explorer, I can also double click on Hello World and you can see that it runs just fine in here without Visual Studio, without any kind of debuggers attached as well. So that's all there is to it. We link against the static library and then we actually make sure that we have the DLL in, a, in, in an accessible place. You can throughout your application actually set paths to certain libraries like search locations, but the root folder of your executable, so the folder that actually contains your application is just automatically kind of a search path. So if you put it into the same folder, if you put your DLL file into the same folder as your executable, you'll be fine. Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to mention is if we take a look at this actual header file, we can kind of start to see the differences between what happens during static and dynamic linking. Specifically, if we look at pretty much any function over here, you'll see that it defines GLFW API before the return type and then the actual function name. So if I go to the definition of that, and there's a few definitions, I'll just click on the first one. You can see we have this whole thing here. We've got this case for if we're on Windows and we're trying to build the DLL file, then it has to actually export the DLL functions. This is actually really important. If you build it without this, it's not gonna work. Then there's also Win32 and just GLFW DLL, which means we're calling GLFW as a Win32 DLL, which does DeclSpec DLL import. And then finally, there's also the building the static library and then calling GLFW as a static library, which just defines GLFW API as nothing. So that's actually what's being defined right now. Now, here's an interesting question. We are still defining GLFW API as nothing, even though we're using it as an actual DLL. So shouldn't GLFW DLL be defined? If we go back to main, if I go to properties over here and I go into my CC++ preprocessor and then I add that preprocessor to the definition, GLFW DLL, let's try and compile the code one more time. Okay, seems pretty legit. Here it is, let's hit F5 and it runs and it looks like it runs in exactly the same way. So what's going on here? Why did I not have to define decal spec DLL import? Why did I have to just like even nothing works and why is that? And that is a question for you guys. You've been asking me for a while to give you kind of challenges and things to do for homework or whatever. Here's a great example. Why is this happening? Why am I able, why do I not have to actually decal spec DLL import to be able to link to these functions in my DLL file successfully? Leave a comment below. Whoever wins this will just get pinned as the comment. That's, I think that's a pretty decent prize, am I right? But yeah, just leave leave a comment below and we'll see who can figure it out but anyway thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did you can hit that like button any more questions about dynamic linking versus static linking all that stuff leave a comment below as well as hop on my discord which is the channel.com slash discord there's a bunch of people there talking about pretty much everything to do with c plus and OpenGL and graphics and programming and just everything it's a really good time if you really like this video and you want to help support the series that i do here on youtube then you can go to patreon.com forward slash the channel you get some pretty cool rewards like getting videos early and Lots of other fun stuff. So definitely check that out and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.